that. Thank you very much. Okay, um, hello everyone. Good to see that everyone is awake. Um, that's a good start. Okay, so uh, just out of curiosity, I'm going to shout out some ages or age range. Raise your hands if that is when you learned how to program. All right? Zero to five. Did you start programming? No? Six to ten? Six to ten. Okay, two hands. Ten to fifteen. Ooh, a few more. Fifteen to twenty? Okay. 20 plus? Okay, did I leave out anyone? No, everyone accounted for. All right, good. So, um, who learned programming at home? Two, three, okay. Who learned it in a formal environment, like a class, university? Okay, sorry. Um, exclusively at a class. Um, let, let me rephrase the question. Who started learning how to program in, in, um, at university or in high school or in a formal educational environment? Okay, three. Okay, so um, basically, um, a lot of people right, uh, started learning programming and learning about technology and learning to enjoy using technology in an informal environment. Right? That's what, uh, that was uh, my experience. Okay? And so um, after I had kids, I wanted, to, uh, I wanted an environment for them where I feel that they can go there and just have fun writing code and working on technology. And one, one problem I found is that in a formal environment, they get, uh, they get technology wrong, right? They, they, they tend to take all the kids and put them into this, uh, this funnel and they put them on a very straight and narrow path from which they cannot deviate from. And that gives kids the wrong impression about what, uh, what the potential of technology is like. Right? Um, so for example, um, just the other day, uh, I met this university kid and he started his Python class. I'm like, cool, uh, I can, we, uh, we can do our homework together. This was at the Koto Dojo. So I went there and he started off with the exercise and he's like, great, um, we can use, uh, you know, we can do this in a totally Pythonic way. Then I realized that it said you cannot use for, you cannot use import, you can use square brackets. And I'm like, what's the point of doing this in Python? Right? Um, so, so there are all these funny limitations that, that are imposed to you in a, in a class environment that really takes the fun out of, uh, out of the tools that you're using. So um, last year, I went to FOSS Asia, an open source conference, and someone gave a presentation on Coder Dojo. So what makes Coder Dojo cool is that it is an open source oriented movement, right? Uh, you can see here all the logos that are, uh, that are uh, mashups, right? Which is basically um, the spirit of open source, right? You take something and then you uh, um, mix it together. So the mod model uh, of Coder Dojo is it is a collaborative environment. But then it's, just, it's not only the kids collaborating with each other, but then it is all the stakeholders, right? Uh, Code Jojo is, a, is, a, is free of charge for kids 7 to 17. So it's not just the kids, but then the organizers collaborate, the parents co coordinate, uh, the people pro providing all the resources uh, uh, collaborate. So it's multi-stakeholder. And it really means that it's a whole community getting together to push this forward. Um, and I will tell you why in a minute why that's cool. Open source. So where possible, everything is released under, under Creative Commons. People are encouraged to share their ideas, share their work, uh, learn how to work with one another. And there's the community ethos as well. Things like uh, self-directed learning, um, make sure that everything is free of charge, uh, parents are involved, uh, that sort of thing. Right. 
And now, uh, in the last seven years, Koto Dojo has spread all over the world, right? Uh, we just started Thailand last year in 2017. We had, uh, we, all of a sudden, we had 10 dojos. But then an interesting hap thing happened. Many of the dojos started fizzling out. And now we are uh, down to five strong dojos. And that's another cool thing about dojos, right? If it cannot stand on its own feet with uh, the community support, then it just fizzles, fizzles away. It fizzles out. Um, which is much better than having um, a, a project which you invest heavily into and there's no interest uh, from the community and yet it has to be pushed on. So when this kind of things happen, we, um, we regroup and then we say, okay, what went wrong? What can we improve upon? All right. These are all the technologies that are, uh, that are work, uh, uh, worked on in the dojo. But it's not only just the technology, right? Um, being a good coder does not involve just uh, writing code. But it also involves being a good uh, team player. So you need to have good social skills, good problem uh, solving skills, and also the ability to, uh, to innovate. So, um, as I mentioned, you pick up hard and soft skills, um, but then it's also a place where the kids come in and socialize and develop a growth mindset. Does anyone not know what the growth mindset is? Okay. Well, a growth mindset um, is the difference between a fixed mindset and, uh, and a growth mindset, right? A uh, fixed mindset is when you come across a challenge and you say, I can't do this, right? Um, this is beyond what I'm capable of doing. Growth mindset is you see a challenge and you say, oh, well, this is an interesting problem. I will see what I can do in order to overcome this challenge and have fun while doing it. So it's, you can say it's, a, it's, it's an attitude, it's a mindset, uh, but people who have growth mindset uh, can, um, are happy meeting new, cha new challenges and overcoming them. All right. So um, how does one start a dojo? Um, to start a dojo, uh, we need a champion, right? Uh, a champion is someone who is in charge of the dojo for their own respective uh, communities, right? This is uh, good because uh, there's a single point of contact, and there is someone who has the main ownership over and responsibility over the success uh, or failure uh, of their dojo. They don't necessarily need to be, uh, to be a coder themselves. They just need to be dedicated and um, uh, be resourceful. Right? Building a team. So this is where I made the mistake. I said, OK, you have, a per you have a one person, great. Find a venue. But I, I did not realize initially uh, how, how, how important uh, a team is. So now when we, when we start up Dojo, I talked to the champion, I said, get your community together, right? So we identify people who are interested in sending their kids uh, to the Dojo or acting as technical mentors. And I come in and I would talk to them and I would say, explain the concept that everyone has to be involved, which surprisingly it's a new concept for a lot of people because most people think it's the responsibility of the organizer is the responsibility of the teachers but no you are responsible for the uh, uh, for the success and when it's personal it's a completely different story um, and a lot of people find that to be completely new so next find a venue Right. Uh, remember, uh, there's no uh, there's no fees charged to attend the dojo. Right. So this is where we need to find another stakeholder. Uh, some places use some dojos use coffee shops. Others uh, use uh, ca cafeterias in, in universities, libraries, uh, meeting rooms, and offices. The dojos I run is at uh, Ananda's FYI Center. Um, so again, more, stakeho more stakeholders, local businesses, local governmental or, uh, organizations. And um, um, it's great because then we build up uh, a wider 
understanding, right? So if, uh, when local businesses get involved, they also have a stake in this project, and they also start seeing the importance of, uh, of, a, of a programming education, of an education in programming. Right. So then um, after you have your venue, then you get together with the team and you plan your dojo. You plan out the structure. Every dojo is different, right? It has a champion and, then, uh, and the team, and the champion uh, decides uh, what to do um, in collaboration with the team. So uh, um, some dojos um, have a more traditional model where, where one guy stands in front of the whiteboard and teaches. Other dojos are uh, more freestyle and uh, let the kids work on their own projects. That is up to each individual uh, dojo. Um, then uh, you promote, uh, promote your dojo uh, through whatever channel that you have. Right? Um, Koda Dojo, the foundation, gives a lot of support. Right. So um, they have these sushi cards, which, is, which are the worksheets that, uh, that the children can use to go through the programming steps. Um, there's also um, e-learning courses uh, available online by the foundation. Um, there's the event page, forums, uh, digital badges, and the guys at the Koda Dojo Foundation are, uh, are fantastic. You, you ask them for uh, anything and they will do their best to, uh, to provide uh, guidance to you. Um, diversity in, in dojos. Now, uh, this is an interesting thing. I, I, I know that a lot of people are, are, are really concerned about diversity. Um, but in, in dojos, we actually don't have a problem with diversity. Uh, pretty much all of our dojos have like a 50-50 split between um, uh, boys and girls. And we have people from all walks of life attending, um, attending the, uh, the dojos. Um, so that's, that's in Thailand. In other places, uh, it's, uh, it's different. But then there are initiatives to get uh, girls involved in, uh, more girls involved uh, in dojos in other countries. So, um, so far, um, there are Koda dojos in, uh, there's, I think, about 1,600 dojos in uh, over 75 countries. Uh, there's uh, over hundreds of thousands of, of, uh, of uh, young kids now um, involved in dojos, and uh, over a million hours uh, volunteered. Outside of Thailand, uh, Koda Dojo also partners up with uh, Microsoft. I think there's a Go Dojo at GitHub. Um, Accenture, uh, IBM supports uh, Koda Dojo as well. Now, uh, come to Thailand. This is the, this is the environment of a Koda Dojo um, at FYI Center, right? Uh, you see this, this girl over here, she's, she's, nine years, she's nine years old, and she's uh, showing off what she has, uh, uh, what she has learned uh, recently. And you can see there's, uh, there's a reasonable mix, right? There's uh, some boys in front, there's some girls in the back, and then uh, there's some more girls. So. Um, and also, there's, uh, there's the parents there um, involved, too. So it is, uh, it is very diverse. Everyone's hands-on. Everyone gets involved. Everyone has a lot of fun. All right. So um, this is a dojo that uh, we set up in uh, Dan Tang, Supanburi, uh, middle of nowhere, 80 kilometers out of the city center um, at, a, at a library. Now, these two boys, I think you can see them from the previous photo, they went off to Dan Chang to, uh, to be mentors and help set up the dojo at Dan Chang. Now, under normal circumstances, right, uh, what would be the, um, the likelihood, say, of a bunch of uh, middle school kids um, in, from Bangkok uh, being able to interact with um, um, kids um, in Dan Chang, which is in the middle of nowhere? Right, um, the 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 social context under which that us that happens is usually nil. Right, uh, the two live in completely separate worlds. But because uh, everyone is involved uh, um, in the dojo, there is uh, there is a common goal, there are common interests, and there is opportunities for um, um, 
for uh, for for this sort of uh, uh, mixing and, and and collaboration. Now, sadly, um, the uh, dojo at Dan Chang uh, ended up having to sh uh, to close down because um, that uh, the the kids involved in the Dan Chang um they had to go for uh, tutoring. So, so they didn't have time to continue the dojo activities, and so um, that is uh, that that is one problem that 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 we have been having. How to get uh, parents to understand that learning without teachers is actually pretty okay, and uh, and kids benefit from it a lot. But anyhow, it's all right. We uh, we try again. Um, this is another uh, dojo um, in uh, Kora. Uh, as you can see, the format is completely different. But then, this is just to give you an idea of of the uh, of the diversity in the ways that one can set up dojos. It can be completely free for, uh, free form, like FI Center, or it can be uh, more structured, uh, like this. Um, so that's uh, the end of the of the formal part of 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 the slides. Um, are there any questions? I can. Yes. Uh, what the age start for like joining this? If like my son just only four years, so how to start on this thing? Um, well, Koto Dojo accepts kids uh, age seven to seventeen. Um, so I have uh, three more years for both your son and mine. But that's why we're working on this. We're setting this up. We have three more years to make lots of mistakes, learn from them, and do it well. Okay. Um, any more questions? Yes. The the placements have some cost. Uh, so they're sponsoring it. Or? They're they're basically sponsoring, right? Uh, someone someone has to pay, and um, for at FI Center, it is um, the property belongs to Ananda, so they allow us to use their meeting rooms in order to. Um, to hold quota dojos, but not only that, um, they have an incubator, so we get uh, occasionally um, talks by um, by some of the startups there. Um, they um, um, they give us access to those guys, so which is really really neat. Thanks. Okay. Um, any more questions? Okay. Well, I'll start ranting on a bit then. Um, okay. So um, um, another reason why why I started off co a, a, a Koda Dojo, right, um, is because um, I find that uh, there's a real problem um, in terms of kids graduating, coming and applying for work, and being unable to uh, coherently write programs, right? It's like someone has studied a language um, entirely by just studying grammar and vocabulary for three years and graduating and not actually being able to write any prose. And I realized that um, after kids come out, um, then they have to relearn everything from uh, um, almost from scratch. I mean, they understand some underlying theory uh, theories, but then but then they can't they can't write code in any meaningful way, right? Um, and the other thing that is uh, completely lacking is uh, is that spirit of collaboration, right? Uh, sh uh, share your code, work together. Um, there are university projects, but then it's not. Uh, it's 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 done in a way that is uh, that is simulated and is not actually effective. So when the kids come in uh, um, out of uh, out of uh, university, then we have to uh, retrain them uh, uh, again to to use the tools to work in teams. Um, that sort of thing. Now, um, I myself learned to code when I was uh, nine years old and did it through the internet. And a lot of the, uh, my uh, my learning was done through uh, the mentorship of uh, open source contributors and open source communities. Right. And um, I suppose uh, I find that, that to be a really powerful way of learning. And I think that. Uh, it is an opportunity that is not open to everyone. Well, by by that I mean that most people don't know that this this path exists. 
Um, so that is uh, another thing that we are trying to do um, out of the Coder Dojo movement. We are trying to uh, bring in stakeholders or people who are uh, companies to org We are trying to get companies to help organize dojo dojos as well and have some of their team members be mentors to the kids who are attending the dojos. This way the kids um, can absorb some of the um, the uh, the spirit um, and the approach to uh, to programming, and hopefully after they they finish uh, with the dojos, they know how to be um, uh, good programming citizens, right? Um, they know how to the approach to take to solve problems. They know the approach to take to uh, to work with one another and work with other people in the um, in the industry, and all this uh, comes about because. Uh, Code Dojo is more real um, than than than, a, than most formal learning environments. Um, the setting is natural. The way uh, collaboration is done is is natural. Um, it is uh, natural in the sense that that's how we generally write op code uh, for open source projects. Is generally how we write code with 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 one another. And that's why I feel that Code Dojo is uh, um, is a great project. It has a lot of potential to scale out in tha um, in Thailand. It has the potential to uh, change many lives and gives ki uh, give kids access to um, um, uh, it gives ac kids access to a technological uh, learning path that is meaningful. And um, so that is why I would like to invite you here today to, um, you know, after this, if you're interested in, uh, in joining Coder Dojo, in helping out, um, let's have a chat and see uh, what we can do together. I think uh, that pretty much concludes my talk. Thank you. Okay, uh, you have a yeah. question? Question. Okay. Uh, a couple questions that are sort of related. Um, sure. Is uh, d do you have something like like terms essentially uh, where the the participants are committing to coming over a period of time? Uh, does that depend on the curriculum that a particular dojo wants? How they want to run it, um, and and if not, or if so, uh, how do you deal with the, the the age gaps? If you've got kids that are seven and seventeen in the same room, they're clearly probably their interests and their capabilities are at very different levels. Um, 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 that's that's a very good question. Um, the, um, with the terms, it really depends on the, each individual dojo, right? Um, that's the short answer to that. Um, with the diverse age group, in the at the FYI center, uh, we find that that um, does not make too much of a difference. I mean, okay, the kids will cluster around other kids that are plus minus two years old. Right, uh, we, uh, we, we have noticed that. But then, um, because of the way we organize, organize it, right, um, if, if uh, Kid A has a problem, Ninja A has a problem, we go to Ninja B and say, hey, you know about this. Can you please come and help A out? So then, uh, even if it's the, uh, sometimes the older kids ha uh, helping out the younger kids, sometimes the younger kid helping out the older kid. But you know, it's not, it's, not, it's not an artificial sort of classroom environment where kids are segregated in batches, right? Um, everyone works, w uh, works together towards a common, uh, common goal. And we realize that um, in such an environment, now this is interesting because it's more apparent in, uh, from the homeschool kids. Now with the regular kids, the older kids have this like, uh, younger kids, I'm not going anywhere near them. But then with the, with the homeschool kids, uh, there's a, a um, there's less resistance to this, and you know they um, they go and help out the younger ones, and quite often the younger ones also go on go and help out the uh, the newer older ones as well. Thank you. <laughs>